Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Precal 11, Chapters 8 and 9. Today we're going to be starting off with Chapter 8. And Chapter 8 is the Systems of Equations, and Chapter 9 is, um, we'll be looking at inequalities as well. And let's look at some of the big ideas first. So some of the big ideas for the chapter is by the end of the unit, we'll be able to model a situation using a, systems of equa a system of equations. Solve a system of equations both algebraically and graphically. Interpret what a point of intersection indicates and what it means. Interpret the number of solutions a system has. We'll be able to solve uh, problems that involve systems of equations. We'll graph linear and quadratic inequalities. And we're going to solve problems that involve linear and quadratic inequalities. So we've done some linear inequalities in Math 11. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the, the quadratic side of it as well in pre-cal Scrolling down to page 3, we'll start section 8 decimal 1. 8 decimal 1 is solving systems of equations graphically. So in um, Math 10, we did this with linear equations. So we had two linear lines, and they intersect, uh, intersected at um, well, one point. Was the, you know, sometimes there was, uh, they overlapped two lines completely, and that was, um, you know, all solutions. Like, be the same, right? And then we had no solution when we had the uh, we had parallel lines. If we had two lines that were parallel, there was no solution. But the majority of the time, we had a two two linear lines and they intersected at, intersected at one point, right? And that was the case when we had um, obviously uh, different slopes, right? So new to pre-cal 11, is now we're going to be doing uh, systems of linear quadratic equations. So we're going to have one linear and one quadratic. Um, and then we're going to, so we graph the line in the parabola. And then we're also going to do quadratic quadratic. All right, so some new stuff happening here, but uh, for the most part, we know that it's an intersection point. The solution of a system is where the points, uh, where they intersect, right? That's the solution. Okay, so it's coordinate where they intersect. This is beneficial because where we're going to go a little later on, and we're solving it algebraically, um, th th these will help us. Uh, right? So the example I have here, it's already typed up for you, so I just want you to follow along. So it says, find the solution of the system equation. There's an example, and here, this time we have two quadratics. Right? So as you can see, we have y equals x squared plus 2. Um, we have that function, and we have the second function, y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 6. So we clearly see that one opens up, one opens down. Um, you can see the graph here. I've graphed them both. Um, I've taken this from the textbook, and you can see that the coordinates are at negative 1, 3, and 2, and 6. So those are the two intersection points, so those are essentially the solutions. Algebraically is a little more difficult. So if they're, what you will need to do is you got to do um, basically a system of equations. Well, these ones are really nice. If they're in function form of y equals, um, you can just set them equal to one another, right? So this is called substitution, but um, if they're both equal to y, that means they're both equal to one another. So you'll notice what I've done here is I've set them equal to one another, and I've added to x squared to both sides uh, to get to the left-hand side. I've subtracted 2x from both sides to get the negative 2x from both sides, and I've subtracted 4 from both sides. And I've gotten there. The reason I did that is just to get a positive um, x squared term, so it, it doesn't matter how you want to do that. Then um, when I solve this, I notice that they're all divisible by 2, so I divide the 2 out, um, or factor the 2 out. I lost it, sorry, so I should have a 2 here. My apologies. Fix that. Um, I factor the 2 out. Um, you can fix that on your sheet. Um, I do apologize. Lost that along the way. And um, then I factor the uh, trinomial. Two numbers multiply together, give me negative 2 add together, give me negative 1 is obviously negative. One, there's two factors. You can leave the two out for now. So the first factor is equal to zero. Second factor is equal to zero. And we have x minus two equal to zero. X plus one equal to zero. So therefore, the x values are x uh, equal to negative one, two. As you can see from the, the graphical solution as well, um, if you're doing it graphically, you just draw the two coordinates of the intersection points in. So um, this allows us to get the two x values. So now we got to substitute two the equations in to either equation first or the second, um, y equals, it doesn't make a difference. I've done it for both, in both points, just to show you that it's not going to make a difference. So the first one for x equal to 2, 2 squared uh, is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 
and then I've done it in the second equation as well, just to show you, you only have to do one if you want to do two. Um, double check, it's up to you. Um, you can see it graphically on your calculator anyway. So I plugged it in there, I got negative 2 squared, negative 4 plus 4 plus 6, so negative 4 plus 4 is 0 principal, and we get plus 0 plus 6 is 6. So one solution is uh, 2, 6, 4 to 2 and 6. And then for the second uh, solution that we had for x equals negative 1, we plugged both those in and we get y equal to 1. I've done both and there's my second solution. All right. So this is just a verif um, to get the uh, equations. I did it twice just to verify. You don't have to. Um, when you, remember, you'll have the graphic calculator. You can double check it anyway, right? So you're verifying it that way as well. But algebraically is you're setting them equal to one another. You're solving for x, so you had to factor, get your two x values, plug them both in to get your y, corresponding y values, and you're on your way. All right. So a little summary. So here's what to expect. So when we sketch a graph uh, to represent the scenario involved in the system of, if we have a linear quadratic equation, um, these are the solutions that you could have. The first one is you could have a quadratic, as you see here, no solution. You could have a quadratic in a linear line that never um, they never cross paths right okay um, then we have one solution this is interesting we have a quadratic and we have the linear line going through this is actually called the tangent line but you don't have to know that now you'll uh, see this in your calculus class in, in about a year's time so for us right now we have one solution and this is a, a point of intersection so it basically touches the curve here and then we have obviously two points of intersection, so there's two solutions, so we have no solution, one solution, two solutions, and then we have um, an infinite number of solutions. Um, one is linear. Uh, this is impossible for a linear quadratic, right? Um, this is where you'll see the quadratic, quadratic, where we see below. So th this doesn't happen, this infinite number of solutions, and this is what I was talking about earlier when we had two linear lines, there's an infinite number of solutions um, when the two lines were essentially equivalent, right? They, they would overlap. Um, so this doesn't happen, obviously, with a linear line and quadratic because they can't have the same, they're not the same shape, right? They, one's, one's a line and one's curved. Then the next scenario we have is quadratic, quadratic equations. So these are some scenarios that can occur. No solution, obviously. You see this one opening upward and this opening downward. They're obviously never going to touch. Then you have one where it opens upward and downward. Um, just in this particular case, the vertex is the same. Um, there's other scenarios that, that can occur with this, which is, uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll check one out. But one point of intersection, one solution. And then the second one is um, two solutions. So this is when you have um, two intersection points, which we saw in the previous example that I showed you. And then, obviously, an infinite number of solutions. Um, this is a scenario where usually we get an, an equation in a different form. Um, this is how we used to verify that our, uh, remember when we completed the square and we wanted to check that our vertex form is the same as our standard form? Well, there, there's a, a prime example, right? Two equations that don't look anything alike. However, when you change from one form to another, they are essentially equivalent and they have a complete overlap. So this is when there's an infinite number of solutions, right? Because the points overlap, all right? So there's some scenarios that will occur. Um, for quadratic quadratic equation systems. All right. Let's look at a couple of word problems here. It says a problem. A girl is standing on a diving board that is three meters above the water. Sketch a graph of the system of equations representing the girl's height above the water relative to the height of the diving board. Which system could we model in the scenario? Explain what the intersection point between the two graphs represents in this partic particular situation. All right. So. It says a girl standing on a diving board that is three meters above the water. Sketch a graph. So if you look at the scenarios, um, I would say system D is the diver uh, springs off the diving board and the board has a fixed height. So I'm looking at this is the path here. You'll see my mouse going here. This is the path of the, uh, the girl on the diving board with the bounce right. And then this is your... Um, the height of your diving board, right? Okay. Um, some people might say A because the diving board um, is, is bouncing, right? Um, however, um, you 
don't want the diving board to break and, and um, water rise. So, yeah, maybe the board will go up and down, but um, I would say the board will fix. So, it could be a platform, who knows, right? Um, but D would be the best, uh, obviously, in this scenario. C looks good as well, but remember, the board and the height, so this means that, that they're above the, uh, the board, so it doesn't really make sense. So, D is the will best represent this scenario. <laughs> Uh, pro next problem says two divers start to dive at the same time. One diver jumps from one in the other meter and the other from three meters. So um, obviously B, C, and D can't even work because the um, you know this one here is the B and Z have initial heights of zero for one of the divers. So I think the best scenario would be system A. It's the only system that has two initial heights. System B has initial height of zero in one of them. I mean, yeah, the divers fine on one, on one divers fine with the other one showing at zero height, so that doesn't make sense. And a point, what would a point inter of intersection occur? And just another uh, question, if, if there was a point of intersection, that means that divers could have possibly um, colliding, right? Or you could say that they um, cross at the same point, but, um, you know, to jump in, uh, you know, again, independent of diving board, one level or one level. But just some different scenarios that could occur, but system A would best represent that with the initial lights of one. Okay, um, let's look at example um, on page, looking at the example page six. So it says a system is defined by the equations uh, 4x minus y plus 3 equal to 0 and 2x squared plus 8x minus y plus 3 equal to 0. So we have two equations here and it says solve the system graphically and verify your solution. So what I've done is I've put them into y equals form. I've put the equations into functions and for the purpose of graphing. All right, um, your graphing calculator, you'll need to do this on, a, on my graphing calculator. If you use Desmos, you can plug them, uh, the equations in as you see them there. But if we're using, um, for, you know, graphing by uh, means of the TI-84 or you're graphing it um, using slope and y-intercept, which I've done here, uh, you'll need to put it in y equals mx plus b1. So that's what I've done with equation 1, 4x minus y plus 3 is equal to 0. I've rearranged for y. I get y equal to 4x plus 3, which is y equals mx plus b. Um, that gives you the y-intercept at 0 and negative 3. So it's right here. And then you can simply do your slope to get a second point, right? And um, go from there. So slope is uh, rise over run, okay, and that would be how you would get to your, uh, your next points, okay. And then you can graph your second equation, so what I've done, my second equation, I've done this by hand, I've uh, set it equal to y again, so I've taken the y to the, uh, you know, to the right, right hand side, um, the easiest thing to do is because it adds y to both sides, then I just put it in on the left side, side so we've y equals 2x squared plus 8x uh, plus 3. My y-intercept, um, sorry, that should have been plus 3 here, I'll fix that. I do apologize. So the y-intercept is at 0 and 3. Um, same with this one, that should also be 0 and 3, I do apologize. Where the negative came from there. Easy fix though. Um, it just happens that they both have the same y-intercept, so obviously that's an intersection point. Again, that's just a coincidence. And um, then I did the vertex, and the vertex point, uh, I just did minus b of 2a quickly. And when I did that, I plug it in, I get negative 2, uh, substitute it back into the equation, you get the y value, y equal to negative uh, 5, so the vertex is negative 2, 5, which you see right here. Um, and I did the same thing with the 2, negative 2, just to check what value we got, and it happens to be the same. So actually the vertex is the second intersection point, and the y-intercepts happen to be the uh, first intersection point. Again, that's just a coincidence. And then when it says verify, uh, to see if it satisfies both equations, we just say left-hand side, right-hand side, do the mean original, and we just plug our x values in. So negative 2 and 0, or one was negative 2, and the other one was 0, and just confirm that both are correct. So this is just your verification, showing that both sides are equal. Again, just proving that 